7, the book of Mark chapter 7. Now I want you to stay with me this morning. I have a very, very different kind of unusual message. And this is what's on my heart, so I'm going to give it to you. This message will explain 95% of the trouble in this world. If you'll listen to this message this morning, I'm going to tell you what's wrong why there's no peace in this world, why after years and years and years of peace treaties and man working with man, trying to get along with man, even people in their own house can't get along with each other, why crime is worse today than it ever has. Look like we'd get, we'd figure it out after so many centuries, don't it? I'm gonna tell you what's wrong with the human race. Uh, This is what they call the power of negative thinking. And this morning, the Bible talks a lot about it. About three-fourths of the Bible is negative. And you need to learn how to uh, remember that. So I want you to look with me in your Bible this morning. And I'm going to preach on 13 reasons why you are such a mess. Really. Somebody told me the other day, they said, I don't know what's wrong with me. I do. So a Christian lady said, I, I, I mess up, I try to do right, and I still keep messing up. Now, I know exactly what's wrong with you. The one that made you tells you what's wrong with you. You have 13 evils in your heart, and you're born with them. That's, that's, that's pretty negative, isn't it? Man's not a product of his environment. People say, well, you take these people over here and you raise them in the right environment and you, and you have them a nice apartment built and you're doing that and all that. You know what? They'll kill each other. You know why? Because man's born with the problem inside of him. You don't believe it? Listen to what your Savior said about you. Look here in Mark chapter number 7, verse 18. And he saith unto them, Are ye so without understanding also, psychiatrists, psychologists, world leaders, are you still without, you still can't figure this out? Now, there are good Christian psychiatrists and they're good Christian psychologists and they agree with us and do good. I'm not, I'm not saying they're all bad or politicians either. But he said, are you without yet understanding? Do you not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man it cannot defile him? Ever drunk in the world knows that verse? Because it entereth not into his heart but into the belly and goeth out into the draught purging all meats. And he said, that which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. Here we go. For within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these evil things come from within, from within and defile the man. There's 13 evils in your heart and mine. And you're born with them and you inherited them from your parents. And Jesus spoke of them here. I'm gonna give you them today. Have you ever wondered why the world never gets better? I mean, after all the progress we've made and and after all the accomplishments and scientific inventions, it it just seems like it gets worse and worse and worse. Peace treaties, homes, schools, just had another school shooting this week. If the Lord don't come, there'll be another one in a few weeks. And there's wars and rumors of wars. Have you ever wanted, this is your Romans 7 in action. Romans chapter 7 is a perfect illustration of a man, and I'm not talking about just a lost man, a saved man. Makes no difference. Makes no difference whether you're saved or lost. You have these things inside you. Getting saved doesn't eradicate the flesh and fix it to where it never sins or has sin in it again. This message will help you. It'll help you understand the depravity of man and the need for the new birth. And it will help you understand, you know what's wrong with you? You was born wrong. I'm just gonna read them off this morning. You can make a message out of all of them, uh, but there are 13 evils in your heart. Number one, he said evil thoughts. The Bible said in Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse nine that the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. 
Now, that don't sound too positive, does it? That don't sound like, well, we need to tell our young people that they're great and they're wonderful and they're good. No, they're not. They are not good. They are not great. They are not wonderful. Uh, without, without the Lord, you're nothing but a mess. And brother, you're nothing, mankind is like that. That's negative. And your, your uh, evil thoughts are what? Like Cain, the very first boy ever born on this earth, had evil thoughts that wound up killing his brother Abel. Uh, he was getting somebody back, getting somebody out of your way. If it wasn't for them, I could have what I want. You and what you want. You know what that is? That's disregard to the rights and feelings of others. It's the old saying of me first, you next. That's human nature. You're born little kids. I've seen little kids trying to ride uh, on them little horses at Walmart. You know, and they're both on there trying to push each other and push each other. They ain't that high. Where'd they learn that what they want is more important than what everybody else wants? You know where they got that? From their mom and daddy. And you know where they got it? From their mom and daddy. And you know where they got it? Like that one kid that's on that thing trying to ride it, and he said, if one of us get off here, I could ride this thing better. That's human nature. That's human nature. We're all like that. Nod your little heads at me and say, when it comes right down to it, we're selfish. And those evil thoughts come out of us. Amen? Uh, somebody said, uh, they, they just had something the other day. They found a, a, a syringe in a Pepsi. And they took it back and sued Pepsi and made a bunch of money or something like that. And they found something like that. And they said, uh, maybe, and when people found out about it, you wouldn't believe the stuff people started finding and stuff. Everybody was finding stuff. That's evil thoughts. I mean, somebody found glass in Campbell's soup. Somebody found metal blitz in hot dogs. Somebody found a rat in a can of beer. Uh, good enough for you. Good enough for you. I, I'll tell you something, brother. I, it probably wasn't even true, but you know what they done? Uh, they just made that stuff up. Those are evil thoughts and come from within. You don't have to teach a kid that. They're born with it. I've seen little kids here in this church uh, go lay there and go, and you think they're dying. And mama said, Mom, Mom, behave, behave, behave. And, mama, and I'm going to have to take you out. I'm going to take you out. And mama starts walking out the door with them and they go, he. <laughs> Little crook, I, little, I, I mean, listen, how do you learn how when you ain't six months old, how to learn how to con people like that? You know why? It's born inside you. I tell you, if your baby does that, take them out there and give them something to really cry about. And then do that every time, they'll stop that junk after a while. Some of y'all, I, I don't know where you learned how to take care of kids, you, you ain't learned it yet. Uh, but anyway, uh, there's evil thoughts. Number two. You know what the Lord says in you? Adultery, adultery. He said it's in you. Now in the Bible, adultery is physical and spiritual. There is spiritual adultery and we talked about that. But most of the time, the definition of adultery is somebody having physical relations and one of those two are married. That's the standard definition. It includes a bunch of other stuff, but, the, but mostly that. You can't go around in this world anywhere. Listen, how many times do you think adultery is committed in this country every single day? Why do you think there's why do you think all those senators and congressmen, every one of them that comes up, somebody brings up a scandal. Uh, they had a woman over here. They had a prostitute over here. They had, you know why? That stuff's on the inside of them. They might be a good upstanding member of the community. They might do right in a lot of areas, but it's inside of you. And let me say something to everybody here this morning. You, you're no different from anybody else. If you think the devil, you, you can't play with that kind of stuff. You can't look at stuff it's wrong, be around stuff that's wrong. You can't take a bunch of eight, four or five, you might get mad at me. You can't take four or five married couples and put them on a yacht and come out there and everybody almost 99% naked and expect everything to go smooth. It ain't gonna happen. The evil is in the heart. Are you listening to me? It's in your heart. It's in your heart. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, him that looketh upon a woman and lusteth after her hath committed adultery already in his heart. How many times do you think that happens in this country? Good Lord. I'm talking about ladies and bankers and preachers and priests and thugs and, and, and scandals and congressmen and, and everybody 
businessmen. Ladies and gentlemen, adultery is in your heart. You don't have to try to get it there. It's already there. You have to fight it and fight it and turn away from it. Next one is fornication. What's the difference in fornication? Jesus said it was in your heart. Now, don't y'all sit there and look at me all sanctimonious like, oh, Brother Danny, you're preaching on these awful sins and I'm a wonderful Christian. I, I, listen, I've been doing this 40 some years. You ain't kidding me. We're all made out of the same old rotten stuff and if you let that flesh go five minutes, it's capable of committing any sin in this book. Say amen right there. Sure, don't you sit there and say, not me. I've never, you know, you're full of baloney, buddy. I'm telling you, fornication has more of a physical slant. Physical slant and a more broad. Fornication is any. You listen to me, teenagers? Fornication is any. You listen to me, young people? Sexual activity outside of marriage. Any. You say, well, hey, Brother Danny, that's ridiculous to try to... And no, it's not. It ain't no more ridiculous than God said. God's not ridiculous. God's not overboard. God told you to wait till you get married. Sure did, amen. All the videos, all the little girls in Hollywood, all the MTV. That's why, by the way, ladies, that's why you should cover up your nakedness out in public because you don't want to be guilty of adultery at the judgment day of men you never even met before and they looked at you and lusted after you. All you young girls, listen to me. It's important how you dress. It's important to keep your nakedness covered up because somebody commit adultery with you and you can be responsible for putting those evil thoughts in their head. See, it's already in you and all it needs is something to fan the flame and movies and music and your internet and your phone and pornography fans the flame it throws gas on the fire we're only on number three we got ten more to go you picked the wrong day to come didn't you I'm telling you brother that's why you ought to do right murders number four Murder is deliberately taking the life of another person. When you think about that, how the school shooting, just another one this week, 10 dead, 10 wounded. My, 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 my. I I mean, what's the problem? What's the problem? Why do people do that? Why do people just drive by and just shoot people they don't even know? Why would a person say, I'm just gonna kill you? You've never done nothing to me. That murder comes up in their heart. There it is again. It's in there and something triggers it. My personal opinion, I ain't got time to preach on all this this morning, but I believe this morning that every one of them school shooters have one thing in common. I all that talks about the news. What causes this? They, this they, all, every one of them has one thing in common and that's hard, heavy metal music. And it's stuff on the internet. Every one of them. And that's what I call kill your mama music. Where you bang your head on the floor and you can't understand a word of it, but it makes you violent. That it's the murder's in their heart and that fans the flame. Are you listening? That fans the flame. Murder. Amen. Amen. I, I'm telling you, brother, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it, it's awful that the murder that are in, there's people in jail all over this country this morning for murder, taking another man's life. You say, I'd never do something like that. I'm telling you right now, the ability to do that's inside your heart. You get in the wrong place at the wrong time under the wrong circumstances, messed up, drinking, fighting, problem. and brother, you commit any sin I'm talking about this morning. Number five, Thefts, theft, what is theft? Stealing, taking something that ain't yours. Taking something that does not belong to you. Do you have to be taught to do that? Don't kids naturally do that growing up? You know why? It's in you to steal things. I was was preaching somewhere up north, this girl, I think she's a preacher's daughter or something, she worked at Walmart as some kind of security guard and she told me this unbelievable number. I forgot how many 
thousands of dollars worth of stuff that just she had caught people stealing at Walmart just in the last, like, I mean, it's unbelievable, like eight, ten thousand dollars something like that. I can't remember that. It was unbelievable, just that one guard and the stuff that is stole. Why do you think they have to have security cameras and everything? The world's getting better, is it? I mean, I have security cameras everywhere you go, brother. They're pointing at you. You know why? You know why they have to put, uh, uh, if you got a pair of shoes, they have to put a little thing on them and you have to cut it loose to even get them out of there or a buzzer will go off because people have theft in their heart. You know why? You think you have to learn that? You think that's a product of your environment? No, sir, brother. I mean, some of you sitting right here today stole your ties from God. You'd steal from God. You'd steal from anybody. I'm telling you, brother, they, they steal. How many, how many ladies that you think have went to a store or took your car to a place to work on it? And them say, no, she's a woman and don't maybe know no better. Or man, I don't know no better. And they said, well, your car had to have this. Your car had to have that. And charged them eight or $900 and didn't do $50 worth of work for them. How many times does that go on every single day? How many times do contract I say, well, we had to get so many two befores uh, to build this and order about 50 extra and then build your wall right there and then take the rest of them home with them. How many times? Uh, uh, let's, let's bring it on down a little bit. Are you sitting around talking at work, acting, uh, and then the boss walk in and you jump up and start working all of a sudden? How many times? I mean, brother, you think about that. You, you think about that, ladies and gentlemen. The dollar store has to keep the medicine locked up. The gym Dollar Gentral, where I shot. I'm telling you something, brother, has to keep goody powders locked up. They know my weakness. I'm telling you what, brother, it's in your heart and something fans it. Number six, covetousness. Covetousness. Did you know that covetousness is in your heart? The Bible said beware of covetousness. Beware, you have to fight it. You have to fight it. I want this. I want that. I want this. I want that. I want this. I want that. I want this car. I, I like that car. I want to trade my car and get that car. I want to sell my house and get that house. I want, to, I want nicer clothes. I want this. Always wanting something, wanting something. You have to fight that. Because it's born inside you. You got evil in you. Lord have mercy. He said, I've worked all week and got up and got ready. Oh, I got come to church and got cussed out and said, I got 13 evils in my heart. That's exactly right. What do you want me to do? Ain't my job to preach the Bible? Amen, brother. It's in you. But here's what the Bible says. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Just how you fight against the lust, you fight against the theft, you fight against it. You fight against covetousness. Lord, help me to be thankful for what I've got. Lord, help me to be thankful for what I've got. You don't have to want every blessed thing everybody else has got. You say, well, if I had his job, or if I had his wife, or if I had his, Bible said, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, thy neighbor's house, thy neighbor's, I mean, anything that is thy neighbor's. Anything that is thy neighbor's. You thank God for what he's given you, you deserve a lot worse. And just thank God for being good to you. I'm telling you, brother, covetous godliness with contentment is great gain. Number seven, wickedness. Just wicked. You know what my mom used to say? You said, you know, that boy, he'd done that just for pure meanness. You ever heard the old folks say that? Just pure meanness. Didn't even have a reason. Didn't get nothing out of it. I remember boys growing up, I did it myself. We used to ride around up there at Nebo at night and get Pepsi bottles and, and want to drive and hang out the window going around throwing, knocking people's mailboxes over just for pure meanness. Somebody ought to beat the devil out of us. Amen? And, and I mean, we didn't have no reason to do that. Man, I remember one time I threw a Pepsi bottle out of sign like that and that thing busted and I felt glass come back and hit me. I said, whoa. I didn't know it could bounce right back in the car like that. We felt it hit somewhere near me, and I thought, Lord, have mercy. Uh, but that's just pure meanness. You know, there's drive-by, these drive-by. There's, why do people do that? Don't even get nothing out of it. Just drive by and shoot somebody. Just for the pure fun of it. That's wickedness. 
Just go, there's a thing going on in big cities where these gang members just walk down the street and just say, that man right there, take an old man or a woman and just beat them half to death. It's all over the internet. Knocking people down. What makes people like that? Jesus said, it's in your heart. You say, well, they were grew up in the in the ghettos and, and that made them, uh-uh, uh-uh. Ghettos didn't do that to them. Being poor don't make you wicked. It's in you. It's in you. Number eight, deceit. Deceit. Deceit means action or practice or tricking someone by concealing or misrepresenting the truth. Whew. They're like that little boy coming to his mom and said, he come out there and, and the preacher had come to visit and he didn't know it. Preacher sitting in there. A little boy comes around. He said, Mama, Mama, we caught that rat. And he said, Johnny held him like this. And he said, I beat him with a rock like that. And he said, we throwed him down, stomped him. And, all that. and he looked over and seen the preacher and said, and the Lord called him home. <laughs> That's the way most people are. Deceit. Misrepresenting the truth. Have you ever caught yourself wanting to slide a little bit to the left or right. I have. Please don't sit there and think, well, not me, Brother Danny. Right, listen, deceit, brother, is an evil that's in your heart. We ought to be straight with each other. We ought to be right with God and straight up with each other, amen? Hey, if you can't tell the truth about something, you might have something to hide, I don't know. That's what happened to me when I was hiding something. You better own it, you better straighten up. You better get right with God. You ain't fooling nobody. Number nine. This is, look at this, lasciviousness. Lascivious, definition. Feeling overt or offensive sexual desire. I know we got kids in here. I don't want to be too plain, but it's a person that all they think about. You got me? Are you listening? Is that plain enough? It's for people that sit around on their phone. And I'm not talking about just, I mean, any, any man thinks a woman's prettier. Any woman thinks a, a good looking man's a nice looking man. I'm not talking about that. That's bad. And you shouldn't do that in love. I'm talking about people that are obsessed with lust. Eat up with it. And I'm telling you what you're doing with that phone. You say, well, I gotta get satisfied. I'll just watch a bunch of pornography on my phone. You'll never be satisfied. You're pouring gas on the fire. It's gonna ruin your life. You hear me? It's gonna ruin you. It'll get you in more trouble. You say, well, nobody knows it. God knows it. And be sure your sin will find you out. Your wife may not know it. You might erase it every day in case she gets her phone or keep it locked. You may, you may not let her know what you're watching, but God knows. And brother, it'll corrupt your mind to where you'll never be what you need. Let me tell you something God showed me one time. I don't say that often. The Lord showed me this. I was in my house and I was praying. And I was right too, buddy. I have a fireplace. And I studied what to preach to young people about lust and stuff. And the Lord said, look at that fireplace, Danny. I said, yes, sir. I said, see that fire? It's warm. It's, it's glowing. It creates comfort. It's pretty to look at. It's great. Fire, I just love a fireplace. But he said, it's got to stay in that fireplace. If that fire gets out of that fireplace, it burns his house down and you'll lose everything you've got. Ain't no doubt in my mind the Lord showed me that. And that's the same way with lust, people. You know what God done with your sexual desires? Are y'all listening to me? I know it's summertime and everybody running around. I don't, listen, I, I'm telling you, you know what God showed me? He said, look at there. God made a fireplace. It's called marriage. And inside that fireplace, it's warm, it's glowing. It brings comfort. Outside of that fireplace, it'll destroy everything you've got. Every one of them serial killers started out looking. You don't you? I know. I guarantee you, they men in here this morning think, "Oh, he's he's over. Uh, I can handle it." I, 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 I. And some of you women say, "You you went and watched Fifty Shades of Manure and swallowed that like you had good sense." You ought to be ashamed of yourself. There ain't no way a Christian ought to be feeding their mind and eyes on filth like that. 
I tell you what you men better do. I tell you what you men, the reason I say men because women are way prettier. I tell you what you men better do. I tell you what you, if you got a problem looking at men, you, you're beyond what I'm <laughs> preaching about right now. Uh, but I, I'm telling you something, brother, uh, and, and by the way, that's included. Homosexuality is included in fornication. You understand that? According to the book of Jude. And I'm telling you this morning, you know what you men better do? You better do like Job, where he said, I made a covenant with my eyes. I made a covenant with my eyes. I'm telling you men, train yourself. Train yourself. Don't look at that one. You see one go by like that? You can't help but see it, but you can't help looking back and looking back and looking back. Train yourself. Train yourself. When you go to the store, when you go on vacation, look straight on before you. Don't keep your eyes. Oh, preacher, that's old fashioned. That's a, I'm telling you, you'll, you'll think old fashioned one day when that fire burns out of control and messes up your life or somebody else's that you love. I'm giving you some good advice. You can't play with fire. At least 90% of the movies that come out of Hollywood are not fit for a person to watch. At least. At least 90% of rock music ain't fit for you to listen. At least. At least 90% of country music ain't clean, and you know it. That's lasciviousness. Number 10. Better hurry, ain't we? Evil eye. What is an evil eye? Why did the Lord say an evil eye? That's a weird thing, isn't it? Well, there's in, in old in Judaism, Hamzah and stuff like that, there's saying that a certain look or glare has bad energy coming off and makes a curse going people. I don't believe that. I've always said, my mom always said, you know, somebody come by, boy, he give me the evil eye. You ever heard anybody say that? And they just look at you like, boy, God. I, I believe I've had the evil eye preaching a few times. Maybe even here this morning, I don't know. There's some of you I refuse to look at while I'm up here. It's too painful. It, it is an evil eye. Amen? I've seen a few. Bragging, uh, 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 avoid, avoid bragging on people and and complimenting people and uh, you, uh, by you you avoid having an evil eye by doing that. That's what I'm saying. You say I don't want to have an evil eye. Well, Brian, oh, you look nice today. Good to see you, brother. Thank God for how He's blessing you. Be positive, somebody. Don't just look at them like I hate you. I hate you too. I hate all y'all. <laughs> That's an average person. That's an average Lord in mercy. Number 11, blasphemy. Blasphemy. What does blasphemy mean? To speak or act against God or the things of God. Irreverence, impiety, discretion. Like the movie, the, the show, Living Biblically. Carrie sent me a thing on my phone. She said, Daddy, look what they're putting on TV. Living Biblically, mocking the Bible, making fun of the Bible. Now, you may not be guilty of this, but you've got the potential in your heart, if you ain't careful, get too far away from God. I'm talking about Kanye West and fools like Marilyn Manson, ripping the pages out of Bible, turning upside down cross, rock concerts that are feast of hell, Bill Maher, Richard Dawkins, people that just mock God and laugh at God and Life at the Bible. Blasphemy. Twelve. Pride. Now, what's pride? Pride goes before destruction. Narcissism. You hear a lot about that today. He's a narcissist. Now, what does that mean? A narcissism is somebody that has more than a healthy dose of self-confidence. My mom said it like this. Too big for his britches. That, can you understand that a little better? Lord have mercy, brother. You don't know people. The other night, we went to the pastor's house to use the phone because the phone would not work where we live. No, all my phone said all week, no service. I got to the interstate last night and 16 texts came in just like that. Bam, on my phone. I said, oh, Lord, how many of them's bad? I started reading. Most of them was all right. And uh, me and, me, we went over there the other night to use the phone. And Brother Wayne was standing in the door like this and the pastor's house is right here and I got out in the forehead on that side and it's dark. You know, in the old West Virginia mountains, there was a beast. It was a dog. Big old black, it looked like a cross between a Doberman and a pit bull. And it come across that yard 
Now, I'm, I'm not scared of dogs, really. I'm not. I'm, I get chased by dogs all the time. I run all, everywhere I go. I, I just, you know, I can't right there. But this one, he had an evil eye on me. I'm not kidding. You can tell when a dog, usually if a dog comes out going, bah, 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 they ain't gonna do nothing, like a person. He didn't bark. He was coming across the street right here, showing his teeth. He was coming after me. There's no doubt in my mind he's gonna tear into me. And I went, whoa! And I run around the, the, the forerunner like it, and Brother Wayne, I just got pushed him out of the way and went in the house. I pushed Brother Wayne out to the dog. Look, man, I can't save you. I'm saving myself. That's human nature. That's evil in my heart. But I, I said, Brother Wayne, you better get out of the way. That dog, buddy, that was coming after you. There ain't no doubt in my mind. You can tell when a dog's coming after you. It's different than when they just come out barking. That dog had murder in his heart, really. And Gary said, I'll get that. The pastor, he pulls out a forty-five, about that long, out of his pocket. I said, Gary! Don't shoot him. I mean, all these stories went through my head of people in West Virginia shooting a dog. That's how the Hatfields and McCoys got started, you know. One of them shot a pig or something like that. I said, Lord, we don't want a war. It didn't bite me. Let it go. Gary had that thing on the mailbox. He said, he ain't going to buy nobody else. And about that time, his neighbor come out across the street, and he said, your dog just about got shot. I said, it's all right, Brother Gary. It's all right. Let it go. We don't want no trouble. I got kinfolk. I know how they are, brother. You don't go mess around pulling guns out. So we went back over to the house, and Brother Wayne asked Ugg, you know, Miss Ugg, his wife, Loretta, Lynn, and uh, I, I, he said, does Gary carry a gun like that all the time? She reached in her pocketbook and said, yeah, <laughs> and I do too. The pastor's wife, she said, this is West Virginia, you know. I said, Okay. You ain't going to have no problem out of me, amen. And it's sad we have to be that, but that, that, that pride, that human pride, that murder, that, that deceit, that all of that stuff, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. Finally, number 13, you didn't think I'd get them all at 12 o'clock, did you? Foolishness. Foolishness. You see, does that mean we just can't cut up like, no, 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 no. The real definition of foolishness is a lack of good sense or judgment. Lack of foresight. Irresponsibility. Injudiciousness. That means not, not knowing how to judge. Indiscretion. That means you keep going back to that place and getting drunk even though you had a fight last week and got your head beat in and you turn right around and go right back there again. That's what that means. That means you know the drugs are going to ruin you, you know, but you keep going back to the drug dealer and you keep getting high one more time and you keep getting high one more time. That's foolishness. You know what the definition of insanity is? doing the same thing over and over and over, expecting a better result. Parties. Drinking. Like they sang to you, I was a fool to wander and stray. Straight is the gate and narrow the way. Now I traded the wrong for the right. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Listen, brother, you was a fool to wander and stray. It's a fool that goes out and parties on Friday night and Saturday night and gets drunk and gets high and goes home with people they're not married to and getting drunk. Listen, that's foolishness. I'm gonna end this thing this morning by saying this. If somebody told you you got saved and that took care of all this stuff, somebody told you a lie. And anybody, any, you, you know, I've heard people say, well, I got saved I don't sin no more. That person is either very crooked or very ignorant or something's wrong with them. Something's wrong with them. The truth is, when you get saved, it does not do one thing to your flesh. Your spirit is born, your flesh, your spirit's made alive. You're a saved soul, but your flesh don't get saved until the Lord comes back and you get your new body. And until then, you're dragging this thing around with you all the time. You know what the biggest problem I've got in my life? That right there. That guy right there. He gives me more trouble than anybody. 
old Danny. Brother Danny gives me, listen, the biggest fight you've got is fighting yourself. Amen? We, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the flesh. Getting saved, don't, listen, getting saved don't change that flesh. It just helps you to learn how to conquer it and not let the flesh rule your life. Now, here's your problem. Your problem is most of y'all people ain't willing to fight. You just give in. I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of fighting. I've had people tell me that. I said, I fought it and I fought it and I fought it. I just give in and say, heck with it. And the Bible said, fight the good fight of faith. If you're here this morning and you're here today, and well, Jason, why don't y'all come and maybe sing something soft for us this morning, whatever God put on your heart. I want you to stand by your head, please. Everybody stand by your head. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, Brother Danny, about 10 out of them 13 things you talked about, I feel in my heart. You know what you need to do? We won't walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. And I wonder how many spiritual enough here today. How many spiritual enough to say, hey, you know what? I fight that flesh every day, preacher. I'm going to get down there this morning. I'm going to ask God to help me read my Bible. I'm going to pray. And I'm going to fight that flesh by the grace of God. You're, not, you're already saved, but you want to fight that flesh. That's right. Come on. Have a bad attitude, hateful. Nobody can't get along with you. Fuss and fight all the time and argue, complain, and gripe, and bellyache. Just get down here and say, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, to fight this flesh. Claim the victory through the blood of Jesus. Claim the victory through the blood of Jesus. Claim the victory through the blood of Jesus. Let God speak to your heart this morning. You let God speak to your heart this morning. He'll do it if you bless him, if you let him. He'll bless you. He'll bless you if you let him. He'll bless you if you let him. You let God speak to your heart this morning. You let God speak to your heart. Well, if you're on this altar this morning, you need help from God. You say, Lord Jesus, I believe, I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe he's coming back again. And I want to live for him. Y'all go ahead. Father, help us this morning. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I wish that Amen. I could pull Amen. the curtain Amen. back again. Yes, hallelujah. Thank God. Rewind Amen. the hands of Father Amen. Time. Amen. You come on this morning. Hey, I don't know what you're going through. But I tell you There's one thing. So you better keep fighting and get that victory that over. If you don't fight it, it'll kill you. If you don't say. kill it, it'll kill you. But all I really have is today. So here I am. Yes, me, Lord. Here I am. I'm a mess. I'm a mess. I'm just a mess. You say, preacher, yeah, I wouldn't stand up there and admit that. You are too. We're a mess without the Lord. The only way I can stay right with God is stay in that book, stay on my knees, and fight this old flesh. Well, Phil Kidd got a message on YouTube. If you get a chance, called Slay It, or it'll slay you. Everybody in here ought to watch it. Whatever your sin is, you don't beat it, it'll beat you. Just like fighting or football or anything else, you don't beat them, they'll beat you. You know what war is? Kill them so they won't kill you. And some of you, you, you just give up. I'm just going to give in to my lust. I'm just going to give in to my, my alcohol, my addiction. That's, you're, you're, you're losing the battle. Sing that second verse. You need to come. Come on now.
Come on, come on. There are so many things I wish I could redo. Yes, ma'am. That's right. And Lord, Isn't that true? I've even Don't you wish there's a lot of things? Too. Ain't there a lot of things you wish you could redo? Lord, yes. If life was just to Amen. show, I think I'd You need to come. Come on this morning, sir. But come you on this morning. refill the hourglass of time. Hey. So here, here I am. am. You biggest tricks that the devil's pulled on a lot of our generation is these TV preachers telling people once you get saved you've got it made you will never have another problem you'll never be sick you'll never have nothing could be further from the truth that's when your fight starts that's when you enlist in the army brother when you get saved Paul you know what Paul said I fight it I fight it you know what he said about his flesh I die daily I died daily. And people just ain't willing to do that no more. All right. Amen.